G'day and welcome to City Skylines. We're back in Amity Bay, a modded Let's Play series on my channel. I just wanted to say thanks so much for all the comments and interactions. I love all the feedback, the fantastic suggestions and all the comments and I just wanted to highlight this one from AB Fruits. They're requesting a zoom out towards the end as there's been a distinct lack of aerial shots so I can absolutely do that from now on and maybe a few cheeky cinematics in the future as well. So thanks again for that suggestion. So in this video, we've got some pretty drastic residential and commercial demand, so we should definitely keep expanding. We're starting to get some not enough worker warnings in some of the industry buildings over the back here, so I thought I'd investigate what's going on. I jumped into the population info view and was quite surprised. So we have over 9,000 in population, only 2,600 odd are employed though, and quite a substantial amount of jobs available, so that'll be where that warning is coming from. Then I noticed that 43% of our population here are seniors, so they'll be retired and not working. They're mainly concentrated in the houses we built early on in the series, and even though we spread the two sides out over different time frames, doesn't look like that's made much of a difference. So we definitely need new homes and new citizens, and then we just have to hold on to our hats because I have a sneaking suspicion that this could end up in a dreaded death wave here. <laughs> to be fair, we have got elder care in place, so that should help stem the tide as it were, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Radio. so round behind us here, on this little island, I think we should go in with a mix of low density and then some mid-rise. Our downtown is eventually going to be around this area, so I think on the end of the island closest to that, if we step it up to mid-rise, it will look nice as it transitions to sky high when we eventually build out the downtown area. I think if we do a mix of housing on here, maybe some touristy type buildings and even some leisure ones too, a nice mix. We have two beaches to take advantage of here, so that could look quite cool. And because it's so close to the mainland, I think we'd get away with a road bridge over the border here. Nothing major, just a small one, but I think that could work. I think as we expand out further, we definitely wouldn't get away with that, and we'll probably rely heavily on ferries to get people out there. But yeah, for now, I think a little road bridge over to this island would work out fine. Okay, let me get this laid out and taking shape. And while I do, let's fast forward.
Okay, now let's take a look at this. So I've just developed half of this island, as I have another idea for the remaining half, but that's for another time. We'll start here in the middle with the services, police, fire, a little aluminium recycling asset by Vanya. I had the vanilla recycling plan in there, but it wasn't coping with the garbage. So this one has a higher processing rate, so it should help to keep that under control. Then a little warehouse yard with zoned commercial goods to service our commercial buildings on the island. Then a little bus hub right here. So we have one new line coming from our main hub over in Fairview to this one here, and that'll take care of Sims wanting to go back and forward. Then I have another line on the island itself, so you can get around the island or change buses here and go back to the mainland. All the options are covered. I've used community schools to cover our elementary education needs. It's such a nice asset with the grass roof, loving it. Then the Institute of Creative Arts for the high school education needs. Again, great asset that I don't really use very much, but I think it goes quite well in here. Then the majority of our mid-rise residential buildings here are from the Heart of Korea Content Creative Hack. I just really like them, they look so good. And these ones here that I've put pride of place out the front here, I love the colours on the front. They give me Miami vibes, so I think they go quite well here. Then just groupings of mid-rises through here, and then plenty of parks and green spaces. I figured if you lived in a high-rise apartment building, you obviously then don't have a garden, so green spaces and parks would be a must in a built-up area like this. Then I mixed in our Heart of Korea buildings with the Green Cities DLC buildings as well. Because the community school has grass on the roof, I wanted to pick that feature up and repeat it, and these assets are just superb. Then in the middle here, Green Cities commercial assets. I formed this kind of green strip in the middle around the park, so I really wanted to make a sort of little area here with single story assets and these definitely fit the bill. Then, because the hostels look so good there, I put in some hotels along the front. I didn't want to go crazy with tourism and leisure buildings. Further on down the line, I want to build out a really cool tourist hotspot on another island. But we're not there yet in terms of city growth. So these just provide a little bit of accommodation along the shoreline here, then some department stores behind, and then back in with the mid-rise residential buildings just to finish this side off. I used a small four lane road right around the edge and then through the middle because I didn't want a wide road. I really like the small road vibes for the island, even though we have about 5,000 residents living here now. <laughs> I think a big wide four lane road would look a bit strange, but given the traffic this is now generating, it definitely needs the four lanes to keep everything moving. The buses will obviously help reduce that, but not entirely. And one last thing to mention here is, I used the Rico mod here. If we take a look at these settings, so I've updated the local settings as when I placed these, the household count for this building was like three or four. It was crazy low. So I know that Biffa has done this as well. I counted the number of households I thought would realistically live in this building. Basically the number of floors in the building, then times that by say four for this one in particular, as I think there'd be smaller condos. Then, just applied that new number and saved it for the asset. Then I just went through and did the same for the others, as there were some funky numbers there for sure. Just makes it more realistic. I don't use the realistic population mod personally, but I still think if we're putting in these mid-rise buildings, I want a realistic number of households to live in them. And that's it. So I've been letting this all run in the background so it smooths itself out, and now it's time to detail it up.
so let's take a look at how all this turned out. Starting over this side, the bridge onto what I've named as Bridgewater, love a good district name that literally describes the place. <laughs> the supports of the bridge have been lit up so they glow at night. Then this mini roundabout, I put a vanilla statue in the middle there, some palm trees, greenery, benches and bins, then paths, and I've made the path go underneath and come back up near the bus station. Kind of like a little oasis in the middle of the hustle and bustle, and just surrounded everything with thick vegetation here. I really wanted a kind of oasis type space, so there's lots of thick greenery. Around to this side, I made the entire outer edge of the island a park, Put down more formal paths on this side, then park assets. Like the park cafe, the restrooms. Then in with marinas, restaurant piers, jet ski rental, fishing islands. I really wanted to put the majority of those types of assets over this side. It's away from the shipping lane that sits on the other side of the island, so I think this makes more sense. This side I really went quite strong with the trees and undergrowth. I wanted the botanical garden look really, as the other side is more sparse. Then just repeating the patterns but switching them up so they look slightly different. A more formal plaza around this side, with a bit more concrete than custom planters. And all around this side I fenced it all in and put small park gates all along for access. I'm not too bothered about trying to make money from it, just a more kind of formal garden this side, than a wilder, freer side where the beach is. So with the beach, I used a lot of deck chairs and beach umbrellas, then a few piers for interest. some food vans and seating in case you woke up an appetite catching some rays. Then in the middle here, I put down three beach volleyball courts, use surface painter to remove the grass around them so they sit on the beach, then in with a custom bleachers asset, which has these cool lights as well. Check this out. How cool does that look? So even when the sun goes down, the game doesn't have to stop. So I thought that looked quite good and kind of suited our beach area pretty well. Then I used the invisible paths as well. I wanted people to walk along the beach but didn't want to use a concrete path. So these invisible paths are great, they really do the trick. Then just here I changed my path from formal to informal and this is a more rambling type of path. No side park gates or anything, just a little path along the shore that anybody can use really. I know it kind of defeats the purpose, as you could just walk around this side and avoid the charge for the park, but I really wanted to transition from formal to informal. Then I put a little broken lighthouse asset in between the rocks here. Maybe in times gone by this stopped ships crashing into the rocks before this was all sold off to developers and turned into a residential zone. Then in the middle here, I've just been a bit lighter with the trees if I can. I do love the palms, so I tend to go a bit crazy, I have to rein myself in. <laughs> I've left some green spaces deliberately, or used just the vegetation rather than palms everywhere. And I think that just mixes it up a bit. I mean, this is prime real estate here, so I'd be annoyed if I had a massive palm tree right in front of my condo. And that's it! Let me know what you think in the comments below. So we've had so many great suggestions come in, so thank you. I can't implement them all at the same time though, as for example, RSX Messi has suggested a stadium with a university. So I don't think we're quite ready for a university campus and sports stadiums yet, but don't worry, I make a list of every single suggestion we get and I will get to them, I won't forget. So don't worry if yours isn't included straight away, it doesn't mean I've missed it out. 
Adam Yant 8167 suggested that it doesn't make much sense for buses to be flying around suburbs without smaller bus stations, or say over in the industrial area, and they are absolutely right. So take a look at these. In the industrial area, I've added in this little modular bus station asset by Ivania. This area will expand again when we get industry demand, so I've placed it here, which looks like it's on the edge, but at some point it will actually become the middle of this area, so quite central. I've also added in some parking here, so you could park and ride this bus service if you wanted to. Then I've changed the bus routes for this one, where our big double-decker bus just ferries sims from the Fairview bus terminal over to this one. Then we have this smaller bus type just to zoom around this area. Then over to the farming area, I've done the same sort of thing. Squeezing this modular bus station asset in here, changed the bus line so the double-decker ferry sims to this point, then the school bus picks them up and drops them off at various points around the farm. I've kept the bus model as a school bus on the line that runs around the farm as I think that's the best model for that. Any other bus driving around there just looks strange. So thank you for that suggestion, I hope you like it. Terrible results suggested a pedestrian overpass over the highway, quite right as well. So I've gone ahead and put that in place now too. There's one down this side for the farm, so up and over the highway using a pedestrian bridge. Then I've continued the path here, changed it to a dirt path to blend in with the dirt on the ground, and this terminates right near a bus stop. So sims can cross over, then hop on a bus to get around the farm if they want to. Clearly need to move that little bus shelter along as well. <laughs> Then down this end, I didn't want to run a pedestrian bridge all over this beautiful interchange here, so I've gone underground instead, creating a tunnel entrance here on the industrial side, with a path to our little bus station here. Then over this side, there's two points of entry on each side of the suburb. So I hope you like that addition, and thanks again for the suggestion. Keep them coming! There's quite a few more, but as I said, when we expand and it seems logical to include more, then I'll absolutely do that. So thank you again, it's wonderful to have your input into this build. Well, that's it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one. If you're on Discord, jump over to my Discord community and say hi. And until next time, take care, have a great day, and thanks again for watching.